Hello and welcome to another episode of Cooking from the Pioneer Pantry. My name is Corey Van Zeitfeld. In this episode, we will explore beloved coffee. Americans have loved coffee for a long time. It wasn't always the crowd favorite though. Prior to the Boston Tea Party, most Americans drank tea. But after the Boston Tea Party, a lot of Americans switched from drinking tea to coffee as a sign of patriotism. And in the 19th century, the type of coffee that they would have been drinking was either Java or Rio. Rio came from Brazil and was less expensive, partially because it didn't take as long to get here, but also it was viewed as a lesser quality coffee. Java, on the other hand, came from Indonesia and was seen as a higher quality coffee. So in 1860s Colorado, pioneers would be drinking one of those two coffees when they were available. So today, to make my coffee, I will need a few things. I have about a third of a cup of green coffee beans, a cup of water, and a clean egg. To make my coffee, I will oops, take my frying pan and I'll put my green coffee beans in here. The reason that I'm using green coffee beans is that coffee loses its flavor very quickly after it's been roasted. In 1860s, out in Colorado, if you were in need of coffee, and coffee was usually available, you would want to buy it green for that reason. So you would take it, buy it green, take it home, and then roast it and grind it yourself. So to do this, I will put it over the fire, making sure I am stirring it constantly. If I let it sit, for any reason, it'll start to burn. My beans have been roasting for a while now. It usually takes about 20 minutes. I added a spider here under my pan just to help me hold it above the flames a little more easily. And as I'm doing this, I want my beans to be a nice golden color. In the 19th century, pioneers did not like dark beans. They were seen as burnt and disagreeable and vile in taste when they, in their coffee. So I'm looking for a nice golden brown color. Some of these beans are starting to turn golden, but most of them are still green. My beans have been cooking for about 10 minutes or so, and they're looking to they're starting to look golden brown. I, I'll take them off the fire and put them into my, my dish here. And I'll let them cool for a few minutes before I grind them. I have let my coffee beans cool for a few minutes and next I will grind them. You can grind your beans while they're still a little warm and that's fine. And to do that, I will be using a coffee mill, like this one. To grind my coffee, I will open this flap on the top and put my coffee beans into there. When you're doing this at home, you can use an electric coffee grinder or a handheld one or, or, mortar, or a mortar and pestle if you don't have either of those. So I went ahead and ground the rest of my beans and pull them out. I have not the finest of grounds, but it's what you get for what you have, right? I'll put them into this bowl my drawer back. So next I'll take 
my cleaned egg and there's a reason that it needs to be clean and I'll crack it put it into the grounds as well as the eggshell so the reason that I put the egg in there is the eggshells keep my coffee from getting bitter whereas the egg itself will hold my grounds together and when I'm pouring my coffee out it won't get sludgy or full of coffee grounds. Now that that is ready, let's go back to our fire. I've put my water to boil over the fire. Once it's boiling, I'll take it off. Maybe, there we go. And I'll put my coffee grounds and eggs into the coffee pot. I'll put this back over the fire and let it cook for about five to 10 minutes. I like to cook it for that amount of time to make sure that my egg is well cooked. I've taken my coffee pot off of the fire. I let it boil for about five minutes. I will take my lid off and pour a cup of cold water into my coffee pot. That settles the grounds and the egg and forces it to the bottom of my coffee. So when I pour it off, I won't have that sludgy coffee that I was talking about. Historically, they would use uh, fish skin for this. They've also, they would also use isinglass, which was like a dried swim bladder of a fish. And supposedly that did the same thing. I'll let this sit for a while and then I will be able to enjoy a nice cup of coffee. I've let my coffee sit for about 10 minutes just to get a stronger flavor. I'll pour it into my coffee mug. As you can see, it's a very light golden brown. And of course, you can add whatever you typically take your coffee with. I personally like buttermilk, freshly made buttermilk after churning butter. But alas, I haven't turned butter today, so I will go with good old cream. And if you are a sugar person, you can, of course, add sugar into your coffee as well. Give this a taste. It's really good. I have to say this is one of my favorite kinds of coffee. It's really smooth and has a very subtle taste. You, of course, could make it stronger if you wanted, but I find it to be just delicious. So thank you for joining us today on as we explored coffee. Please stay tuned for further videos. If you would like the recipe or where you can find green coffee beans, please visit the City of Littleton website under the Littleton Museum page on the Museum at Home tab. Thank you so much and we look forward to seeing you.